Yeah, welcome back to my presentation. Now I want to show you how to analyze the data of Jose with my software Programmita. How to do this in practice. First, of course, you have to place all your data files together with the Excel version of Programmita into one file. And then simply execute the Programmita file and then the interface of Programmita will open. In the next step, we have to select the data file, which is located in this input data box. And here we select the data file Cacas Conciavo Todas. That means these are the droppings of all animals together. The data file for Programmita has the following structure. I show you here. So this is a simple ASCII file and in the first line it contains the dimensions of the rectangle in, encircling the overall um, study area. So in my case it's uh, 320 bins in one direction and 460 in the other direction. And then it gives you also the information on the number of points in the list. And then you have the X and Y coordinate, and then you have a number 1 if it's the first pattern and the 0 because there's only one pattern. And here this is not needed in general, this is just a comment. These are the, the points of the deer. And then if I go down, I have the Javali, this is the wild boar. And then I have also the other one, this is the, the fox, sorrow fox. And here finally you have the tejon, this is the um, butcher. Yeah, so you have now the data file selected. And then you have to select a spin width. In this case, it's already proposed, the number one, you click OK. And then you can show <coughs> the data. The pattern of the data and here you see now in this window where all the droppings of the animals were located because the study area is irregular one has ad to additionally introduce now to Bogometer the size of the observation window so then we go here to irregularly shaped study area then we select uh, polygon data except this here we click again, calculate index, and then we see the data and the area outside of the window which is excluded. And now we already see here it is part the percolation function of the data. Yeah, now the task is to analyze this data. And as a first null model, we can use the complete spatial randomness. And to do this, we go here to calculate simulation envelopes. And then another window opens with a number of options for the null model. First, it asks you about the number of repetitions. And here we select 199. Or if you like, you can also do more. And then for the error level, we have the fifth highest and lowest here. And then we select the null model pattern 1 is CSR and then simply calculate index and then it goes here extremely quick with this computer. And then you see here on the right hand side <coughs> the simulations of the null model. And then immediately the percolation function of the observed data pops up together with the simulation envelopes. And it's now from this plot very clear that this is a highly aggregated pattern. Now to quantify better the properties of the cluster pattern, we go <coughs> to another point process model to this so-called Thomas process I presented you before. And to do this, we go here in this button to cluster process. And then we go to univariate double cluster. It's a univariate one. And I programmed a nice option to, to do this fit automatically. 
So we go to automated and then we select here the right interval where we fit the data. And this is from 1 to 40 meter. This is the best interval. And then we simply click here OK. And then on the screen you can observe how the program searches the best fitting double cluster Thomas process. So the double cluster process has basically large clusters and nested small clusters inside the large clusters. So it has typically two critical scales of clustering. And here you can see how already how well the point process fits the data. Yeah, now it's finished. And the four parameters of this process are these two ones here, down here. These are the size of the large clusters the size of the small cluster. So basically the diameter will be about 60 meter here and or 60 units of the data and this will be six units of the data. And we have about yeah here the intensity this is about ah yeah this is about um, seven, 70 large clusters and about 200 small clusters. Yeah, and then we can also simulate this point process by going to calculate index. And then you see, because it's a double cluster process, it has green points. These are the clustered parents. And it has also red points, which are the actual pattern we are interested in. And yeah. Ah, I show it again. Now you see only the, the cluster pattern. And this is one realization of it. Yeah, and this is now the result. You see here again the observed percolation function. This small gray line is the average of all simulated percolation functions of the Thomas process, of the cluster process, and these are the simulation envelopes. So you see it's a relatively good fit. But here at a very small scale, it does not fit because there is a slight additional clustering at very small scale, caused probably by the uh, butcher um, type of sea dispersal. Yeah, of course, you can also look at other summary statistics, summary function, not only the percolation function, but also others. And then you can do this here in this smaller box. So this is the button for the percolation function. And then you can also look at the L function. This is a transformation of the K function. And here you see there is this very small departure at small distances where there's more clustering in the data than in the double cluster Thomas process. But then at slightly larger distances, it fits relatively well and it's very well inside the envelopes. This here, HS, this is the empty space function. And here you see it's also more or less well fitted. There are some smaller departures, but it's still inside the envelopes. And I can also look at the nearest neighbor distribution function. And there you see some smaller departures here. This is probably caused by some isolated points, which are more isolated than expected by the Thomas process. Additionally, we can now look also at the global envelopes and the goodness of fit test. And for this, we go here into this icon got Gov or goodness of fit test, and then another small window opens, and I want to do an univariate analysis, and then it shows you the percolation function of the data and the envelope, and then you can use the student transformation, and then you see now that <coughs> after this transformation, we have the simulation envelopes, the point wise simulation envelopes are constant. And the whole uh, summary function is inside the envelopes, except at a very smallest uh, distance. And the green one shows you the global simulation envelopes. And then I can also transform the whole thing back. 
And then I see here the green, these are the global envelopes, and the red one are the pointwise envelopes. But there's not too much difference, because there's this very small scale, this quite big departure from the null model. Yeah, this was the example of all data together. But now we can repeat the same analysis if we use all droppings of animals, but not of the budger. And then to do this analysis, I select the second data set. This is Kakas Conservo Sintechon. So these are all droppings without a budger. And then I show you here now this new pattern. You see the percolation function. It's now much less clustered at very small distances. Then we can also try to fit the automated point process. This is all setting correct. And now it fits the whole thing again. Here you already see in this small graphic here for the percolation function that it will produce probably a better fit. And here in this automatic fitting procedure, I use both the percolation function and the k-function at the same time, because the percolation function is more sensitive at small distances, and the l-function is more sensitive at larger distances. Yeah, so now I have the best fit parameters determined. We see the large-scale clustering is more or less the same. This is sigma is about 34. This was more or less the same in the, in the other analysis as well. And the small cluster size is about 3.8. And this was 3.3, .3, if I remember right, in the other analysis. So that means the spatial structure, the, the sizes of the clustering are more or less the same, but the number of clusters are different. So here we have a few fewer large clusters and also fewer small clusters. Yeah, to see how the whole thing fits, we run again the simulations of the fitted Thomas process. And then we see now in this function that we have now a, a fit which is completely inside the simulation envelope. So if we look at the, at the student transformation of the data, now we see that it's perfectly inside the envelopes. And if we look for the L function, let's see how well this fits. Yeah, and this is also now a much better fit. Yeah, so also even the L function is completely inside the envelopes. And the nearest neighbor distribution function had some problem. And this is... Uh, It's slightly better, but still there is a, at this distance is a smaller departure caused by these isolated points. Yeah, that means in summary I can say that the pattern at this study area is basically a pattern composed of two critical scales of clustering, a very small scale clustering and a larger scale clustering, and that the budger causes an additional very strong clustering at very small spatial scales. Yeah, so thank you for listening and then I hope you can repeat this analysis at your homework using my software and the data which were provided by Jose. Thank you very much.